seeking you now that you lead us down a path that we may invite these your people that they may hear a word from heaven yield on to their way and find Jesus to be the only way Lord use us now in this moment Lord we come asking and beseeching you in the name of Jesus that you will stand in this weakened body think with this mind and speak through these lips Lord we pray now that the meditation of our heart and the words of our mouth might be found acceptable in thy sight O oh, my strength and my redeemer for thou thou art in Jesus name we pray amen as you now stand resting on your feet, please turn your attention to the book of Romans in the fifth chapter. Romans 5. Romans. The very first epistle that follows the book of Acts that come after the book of John. That the book of Luke that comes after the book of Mark, which comes after the book of Matthew. So if you go Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, you'll run right into Romans. Amen. When you have it, say amen. amen. Out of this said book, the book of Romans, in the fifth chapter, I just want to lift for you one verse of scripture, even though I would wish that in your reading this week you would look at the whole fifth chapter of Romans and those of you who really love the Lord maybe even take a dive into the whole book of Romans Amen. where we find the Romans road to salvation but I just want to lift up for you just the second verse Romans 5 and 2 and if you'd be so kind to read it with me we'll get through this it says by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Say man, while you're standing there, if you know you're saved, I dare you to say access. access. No, you, you, if you save, say access. access. Granted. You should have shouted right there. Yeah. Access. Yeah. Granted. Yeah. Be seated. I hope that somebody get this before we leave here. That in this book that Paul is writing, he's writing to a very difficult church to reach. He's writing to the church at Rome where there is a Roman army that has occupied the state. And they're sitting there telling people, if you worship God, if you serve this Jesus, you will die. None of you entered here under the threat of death for coming to church. But here are individuals that Paul is trying to tell them, come to church even though you may die on the way, or you may die in the service, or you may die right after leaving, he says, come to church. Some of you know you, if it's a good football game on, if the right movie's playing, if the right person spend a, spend a night at your house, Coming to church won't be on your agenda in the morning. Your boo show up, you gotta make breakfast. But if you're not married to him, he should have a time stamp on him. That he can't stay there too long. But that's for another message. I want you to see Paul is writing to some people who were in fear of their lives. Then they had to deal with this fellow Paul who just in the book of Acts said he, he ain't been a Christian that long. He, 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 ain't, he, ain't, he hasn't proved his pedigree. He, they remember him on some parts of town for being a hellion. I remember when I first came to church some folk were sitting around taking bets. So how long is T going to stay in church? 
So I wonder what girl he got his eye on at the church. He, he ain't, he is, the record bears, he doesn't go to church regular. All right, sisters. What fella you had your eye on? One of my friends asked me, he, 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 he said, what's the hook? What's the hook? What are you in there for? What are you going to get out of the church? Paul hadn't been around that long. Some people was probably still afraid of him. So the last time I saw him, his name wasn't Paul. His name was Saul of Tarsus, and he was persecuting the church. See, I'm stopping by to tell you some folk who's standing out cursing and spitting on the church. They may be pastoring and preaching in a few days. You're going to miss me. I'm trying to help you. Some women whose dresses was a little too short to come into church without you looking at them funny, they'll be mothers. I'm trying to tell you that there are things that will happen that the folk you didn't think would come to church, they're going to be the leaders at the church. Don't look at me funny. Your dress ain't always been long. If you didn't have so many scars on your legs, it might not be long now. Some of us, we just covering some stuff up. It look holy, but it, it's just covered up. Tell somebody it's just a cover up. I'm just trying to help somebody realize you at the right place. It may not feel good right now, but you at the right place. Paul was trying to get the people to understand that I have been changed. I can go back to certain parts of Cleveland, folks who haven't seen me in about 23 years. They be looking for some hair, but they will remember me because my I still resemble myself. But my behavior has changed and I don't go the places I used to go and I don't do the things I used to do. And if you haven't changed, just keep coming until God imputes the change to you. It doesn't happen for all of us the same way, but it should happen for all of us some way. Some of us have to understand, don't, don't, don't rush people through a process that you just got into. I'm trying to help somebody because we said our message is access, access. Paul, Paul was trying to tell the church access is granted. I want you to understand that the first way access is granted for the church is through our prayers. That we have access to go to God in prayer. We have access to step off from everybody else and go into our secret closet and have a little talk with God. The old saints used to sing, sing a song and they said, steal away. They're letting you know that even though the slaves meant it, that they were going to ease away from Mr. Johnny, God meant it that we could ease into the presence of a holy God. That I'll steal away sometime. Sometimes brother deacons even at the church. You got to know I got to steal away to have a little chat with God. That the person that I'm trying not to act like don't show up at church. Don't you know that most Christians are schizophrenic? That if you catch them at the wrong time, that other person may show up. We have a little schizophrenia in us. And if it wasn't for the Lord holding us down, that other woman might come to church. The one that won't let you talk to me any kind of way. The one that won't let you look at me and sister girl with the loose neck that wiggles around a little bit and got two snaps in a circle for you. But I'm glad that I can steal away before Tony shows up at church. That you have to understand I'm like that table. I'm just covered. All of the old stuff is still like Prego. It's in there. And if you stir it up enough and you pull on it long enough, it'll show up every once in a while. And some of y'all will say, well, preacher shouldn't act like that. And I say, you shouldn't have pushed me like that. Because I still listen to that old rap song that said, don't push me because I'm close to the I'm trying
I need to find out how many of y'all was at home last night. Some of y'all wasn't watching the Disney Channel, TBN, y'all was. God is giving us something in this text that I see that we stand in need of. He was given grace. The covering that lays upon us is the grace of God. Some of you, you will get to heaven before you realize that some of the people you bothered. The only reason that they didn't get you. They were covered. You'll find out that the only reason that you got to push me around that day. I was covered. We have to understand that God covers us. And in covering me, he really covered. Amen. Some of y'all don't know Sonny. Because he's covered. And when God covered him, he covered you. That's the reason you need to thank God sometimes. When you bother folk and you turn around. And you don't wake up in eternity. It's cause you were covered. That God was looking out for babies and fools. And that's why we made it through some of the tests we've made it through. Because you have access granted. When I didn't know how to pray, mama knew how to go before the Lord, call on my name. And I heard the Lord say when he peeked out from heaven and saw mama on her knees laying on her face. He said, access, your prayer is being heard. Keep on praying for your children. God is still looking from the porthole of heaven and he's saying, access. We have to understand that we pray for people because God hears the effectual, fervent prayers of a righteous man. Some of you, the reason you made it here today, because I said, Lord, cover them as they're on their way. Give them traveling grace, arriving mercy. That's the reason you were driving fast, thought the police didn't see you. It was because God said, access. I have to understand that I get access through prayer. I get my access to God through prayer. Your access to talk to God was an expensive undertaking. You didn't just get permission to talk to God. You can't even have permission to go see Governor Brown. You can't even go see Federal Glover. You can't go see any of these individuals because access may be denied but because you have an ability to pray is because access granted one day Jesus hung on an angry cross and he gave you access to the throne it didn't come cheap and it didn't come easy your access came when God watched his son suffer that we might be saved he then tore open the veil that you would have access granted it's one thing when you can look to the heavens and know that because of what he did, access granted. Before in the Old Testament, access was denied. You had to go to a chief priest, you had to go to a high priest, and he had to go and take your sin, put them on a goat, let the goat stand there, cast all your sins on an old goat, then go and slay open a bullock, slay open a pigeon, a turtle dove, and then take all your sins, put it over there. Had to tie a bell around his ankle, go into the Holy of Holies. You couldn't go in. He had to go in. Hope that all of his sins was washed away. Why they put the bell on him? Because as long as the bell was ringing, he was still alive. If the bell stopped ringing, it meant he had died. Your sins were still on you. But one Friday evening on a hill called Calvary, I see the Lord as he peered down from heaven. The veil was ripped, and he said, access granted I don't need nobody I can go see the Lord for myself because I hear him say access yeah. 